e-commerce PPC. Let's get ready for the holidays. What a treat for PPC Zone August 2022 to get experts together from Meta Ads, Amazon Ads, and Google Ads all in one event. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales, and I created this event to elevate new perspective insights in our industry. I'm here with Corey Henke, Nerd in a Basement, who just spoke about Meta and the new commerce frontier. I'm here with Mandeep Kaur, Amazon business owner and coach, who just spoke about the current state of Amazon PPC. And I'm here with Menachem Ani, founder of JXT Group, who just spoke about making the most of Performance Max this holiday season. Thank you so much to all of you for taking the time to join me live today and for joining this panel with our live audience on YouTube and LinkedIn. So to get us started, a common theme I heard from all of you right now is that you are definitely looking ahead to 2022 and testing some new features that may not have been available in the past on your platform, or they may not have tried in the past. So I'd love if you could each share what is one thing that you're planning to do this holiday season in PPC that's going to be a new tactic, um, a new strategy, a new format. What's something new you're planning to try this year? Um, I think that the majority of our brands, different from last year or even today, will have um, checkout implemented so that they so that their brands will be able to be purchased on on a social platform. This has always been something they've been scared, you know, about in the past. They never wanted revenue to come from two different places. Not many people such uh, trust social platforms with all the customer information. But I think we are to a point now where there is just too much movement towards that direction um, from an audience standpoint, as well as the tools that are provided to advertisers that use it. I think now you might be at a competitive disadvantage, you know, if you don't take advantage of it. If you're not enabling that buy on Instagram or buy on Google or whatever it might be, that native shopping experience. Exactly. Got it. And Menachem, I think I know what's going to be new for you this holiday season, but what's one thing yeah. you're planning to test for the first time in Q4? Yeah, I mean, something that, that you know, for retail performance max was not available last year. So that definitely is something. But I think to kind of echo what, what Corey mentioned is leaning into that first party data. A lot of our, our clients might have been hesitant to share their customer list with Google in the past. But at this stage, it's like you, you kind of have to. And so uploading your email list, your customer list, giving the system more of that first party data, leaning really into it and allowing the system to do a better job. First party data, absolutely something we're hearing a lot of. What about you, Mandeep? Is there something new or different you're planning to test this holiday season with your Amazon PPC campaigns? Well, I've already put my orders in for Q4. So uh, the test is, is a go in. It's actually just an extension of what I've done with other products. We have something called um, kind of a product collection ad where you're shown on the top of three products that are really targeted for that keyword. And what I've done is actually added variations. You have to have three products that um, would convert for that uh, keyword. So I've actually you know, done test products of maybe you know having the first product that I know will convert and then the other two supplementary ones, whether the offer be a different color or a different size, just so I can get that spot and drive traffic because those ads, the product collection ads are only available to people who are brand registered, uh, meaning you have a trademark. Uh, so it's another um, a, a barrier to entry and those ads tend to be very low cost per click. And at the end of the day, it's about profitability, not always revenue, or it shouldn't be about revenue. It should be about profitability. So honing in on those little tactics of ensuring that I don't blow my budget for Q4, that um, I, I have these other variation products that make sense um, to drive traffic to my store on Amazon. Got it. And if you are watching this live right now on YouTube or LinkedIn, you can feel free to type a question for any or all of our panelists into the chat, and we'll be sure to get to your question. So I've heard from all three of you some of the new things that we're going to be trying in 2022. And we know the change is the only constant in PPC. But that being said, there are probably still some fundamentals, just things that you always do to prepare for a Q4 holiday season that are going to be no different this year. So I'd love to hear from each of you after you've just shared something new you're going to be doing, what's something that's a tried and true, always must do to prepare for the holidays that you will continue to do this year? 
Menachem, would you like to go first? Sure. Yeah. So for us, it's really a lot of just, you know, dot, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, making sure that we have all the promotional information available for each campaign, you know, what, how long it'll be running, when it will be running, setting up in the back end of the system, promotion extensions, all that to make sure that whatever the, the deal is or whatever we're promoting can really be pushed and taken advantage of. You want to try to set that up as early as possible to know that it's there, it's approved, it's in the system. You don't have to worry about it in the last minute. None of those crazy last minute disapprovals yeah. that I know people yeah. get freaked out about. What about you, Mendeep? You mentioned something new you're trying this year. What's like a tried and true Q4 Amazon PPP success tactic that you're continuing with? Um, it's So we take our ASIN or our product identifier and we put it in a Chrome extension that we use called Helium 10. And through that, we're able to see where our organic ranking is. And ideally the first page is one to 30. I will run that uh, extension and see where I'm at in October. And the products that I'm maybe, you know, position 40, I'll run a small campaign to bring that one up. Um, the low hanging fruit, that's a kind of a tried and tested uh, method. And I'm actually sometimes surprised what I feel like language changes year to year and how we describe mm -hmm. things and what might be a keyword last year may not be a keyword this year, or we might identify a new keyword. And the only way you are able to really do that is to reverse ASIN yourself to see where your position is. And, you know, I've had this happen where I'm like, oh, I didn't even know this word existed because you can't rely on last year's data of how we describe products. There could be a new trending word associated with it. Um, so I find that is really helpful uh, in Q4 because not everybody's going to do that. Got it. So keeping track of where you're kind of doing organically, giving a little boost if needed, and then keeping track of those keywords, because it's true. I know I was just searching for um, a grown up lunchbox and I learned that a bento box actually is what a lot of people call them. And so that was actually, here we go, my latest Amazon purchase. And what about you, Corey? What is something that's tried and true for you, always do in Q4 that you'll be continuing with in 2022? I've been thinking about this question and it is so tough to answer because like everything like literally changes, but I think for my advertisers, you know, being mostly e-commerce, I think one thing that they definitely leaned into last Q4 was vertical video. And I think with the advancement to story ads, or sorry, short ads that we'll see on YouTube, you've got stories, you have reels, you have TikTok. This is a video, um, this vertical video is something that can now scale across multiple platforms. Kind of like how we saw with landscape, how I was able to go with feed and as well as be on YouTube. Now you have this vertical. I just think that the new thing this year is how do you make vertical for TikTok that's different from YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and is there a difference or should there be a difference? So I think there'll be a lot more testing in Q4, but I think if I'm going to keep something the same, it's definitely vertical video and leading with video. Vertical video. And we heard from Mandeep as well earlier during her talk about the importance of video on Amazon ads as well. And then Menachem spoke of Performance Max, where again, video is one of the key assets there for Performance Max to perform well. Speaking of which, we have a question here from Luna. Menachem, do you recommend pausing any existing shopping campaigns and letting Performance Max have the full speed, full spend, or is it okay to run concurrently? What do you think? Oh, I believe you're on mute, Sorry. Menachem. There you go. Sorry. So the way the system is built is that any products that are within a Performance Max campaign takes precedence over any shopping campaign. And so if you have products running simultaneously in standard shopping or even smart shopping and Performance Max, it won't go to auction on the other campaigns. The Performance Max will take precedence and block the others from going into the auction. So Typically, it's okay to have them running concurrently, but there's not much of a point. Um, if you do want to, as a strategy, have both campaigns running simultaneously, you want to make sure they have different product groups or products listed within each of the campaigns. Otherwise, they, they won't run. Got it. Thank you from that, from our resident Performance Max Google Ads expert. So I know the focus of today is really on PPC and the paid ads component of these platforms. But of course, whether it's Google or Amazon or Meta, you know, Facebook or Instagram, there's a big organic component as well. And so is there anything that you do or you advise your clients to do that they need to start getting ready now in August, either organically or from a paid perspective 
to prepare them for better results in Q4? What should business owners or agencies be doing right now to ensure the most successful Q4? Or can kind of wait until October or November. Mandeep, do you want to go first? Uh, have enough stock. <laughs> have enough stock. Yes, that's been a huge problem recently as well, right, with supply chain issues. So how are you managing that, Mandeep? I think you mentioned you've already ordered your Q4 product. Yes, I've already ordered my Q4 products, but I recently had a TikToker um, post my product, one of my products. And so I sold out of that particular product and I didn't know how or why or what was going on. So yeah, searching for that. So, so over ordering because of the delays in shipment and Q4 this year is going to be just pretty much the way it's been all year. Adding that three to four week buffer um, is going to be important to, to have and just having extra stock, whether it be at a 3PL in the States or for me, uh, my Canadian stock, I have extra you know, just in my garage. Uh, just to keep track, because what what we are what we see is our past data of what the keyword historical rank is for that product. But what I'm seeing year over year, there's a twenty to thirty percent increase. And sometimes us Amazon sellers are not a, are not factoring that in um, because it's not an exact science, you know. But that does tie in some of your cash and your cash flow. But mm -hmm. it's, it's weighing that for your business. Are you better having more stock um, or running out of stock? And so your perspective here is for this year, you'd rather have a little too much rather than not enough to make sure you're not missing that opportunity. Yes, yes. For, for products that genuinely sell, uh, yeah, having that extra 20 to 30 uh, percent is the strategy I'm going with. Great advice. So if you haven't gotten your orders in, get those orders in now. <laughs> what about Menachem or Corey? Menachem? Yeah, so I, I would echo a lot of the same. We've definitely had last year, some of our clients run out of inventory on their top selling items. So that, you know, that is super important. But I think that, and this is something that Corey might might agree with, is, is just getting the right creative assets ready in advance. Um, you know, especially leaning to performance max away from Google Shopping. It's like you need more of that image creative, video creative, and you know shorts is becoming a thing so vertical video definitely is is something that's important but making sure you kind of have all that stuff ready in a timely manner so you can launch properly having lots of creative ready now when we all have a little bit more time in august september versus trying to come up with new ad concepts in november when everyone's a little creative yeah. i think uh you know instagram is a very unique place when it comes to organic um, one of the things you have the ability to do is boost a post organically, you know, via the meta business suite or inside the Instagram app. This used to be a feature only for the Instagram app, but you can drive people directly to the Instagram profile. And so by doing that, you know, you give people the, uh, the, the opportunity to see what you did in the past, what you did today, they could go directly to your website or they could visit your IG shop, all of it creating intent. And so what I want advertisers to think about, you know, as we move into Q4, where is a better place to drive a user? Is it your shop or is it your website? Because sometimes we find that, that a website, I don't know how your website works. So that's something I have to learn that's new. It's easier for me as a customer to go to your Instagram to find out about your product or service potentially. And what we find is that when users go to the Instagram first and they make the organic jump to go to the website, it's usually a higher converting user. So what I would tell brands is to really think about the destination for their user and what's most likely going to drive that purchase for them. It's really interesting because this event today is all focused on e-com, but on the lead gen side, there's that similar trade-off. You can have the lead gen form within, you know, the Facebook ad itself where people don't leave the platform, or you can drive people to your landing page to then fill out a lead form there. Um, and there as well, I give similar advice, like keep people on the platform. It's auto-filled. It's easier. It's easier for the customer, even if it may have some potential drawbacks for the advertiser. And so I hear you saying the same thing on the e-commerce side as well. We are almost wrapping up our panel for today. So if you do have any last questions for our panel and you are watching this live on YouTube or LinkedIn right now, feel free to type that into the chat. One thing I did want to ask before we go is I know many of you have all of you have been in the business for many years. We've been sharing some success and tips and things to have a great Q4. I'm sure you have seen some disasters and made some mistakes before as well. So are you willing to share with us what is one 
you know, Q4 disaster or a mistake or something that has happened to you or a client that you want to make sure doesn't happen to anyone else. Any parting words of wisdom here? I think I'll go first. Um, and I know all of these tools that we have on the various platforms we talked about today are so business focused. And I think sometimes we need to bring it back to fundamentals of thinking like a customer. As Corey brought up that last point, as a person who goes and is on Instagram, uh, seeing, you know, visiting an external website and then trying to navigate through that, you're right. It's, it comes down to the customer journey and making it as easy as possible and following that route. You know, at the end of the day, that customer doesn't care how much pride and love you've put into that product. They just want to see how it solves their problem and the ease to buy the product. And when you keep it simple sometimes um, and have those basics in place, uh, they do help because I think we sometimes are so focused on the business aspect of it, we lose sight of our customer. And Echo McCory said, keep it really focused on the customer and just keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Corey, any kind of mistakes or horror stories you want to share with us? You know, it's tough, man. It's tough to bring up a horror story. <laughs> but what I would advise is yep. that like, if we're not innovating and we're not doing something different, we can't like expect previous like results. We have to always continue to move the ball forward. And so we have some advertisers that like to run, you know, a week long sale, same percentage off, right? Obviously big increase first day, everything gets sold and it kind of dribbles out, right? I would challenge advertisers, you know, to have a different deal every single day. Right. And really put the pressure on bringing these users back organically with the thought of what could it be next day. Right. So I see that like advertisers kind of fail or kind of miss when they don't put enough of that pre work in, you know, to Black Friday, Cyber Monday and really giving the brand or giving the users or their, their customers something excited to be excited for. Absolutely. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Menachem, any uh, mistakes you wish you could have avoided or uh, holiday horror stories? I think it, it just all comes back to planning. Um, don't, don't launch any major promos or campaigns like right before you leave the office. Just make sure you, you're, you have the time to check and, and ensure everything is serving properly. I've definitely seen my share of, of those kind of things over the years. Um, so, yeah. Well, one I'll just add to that that I saw from when I was working at Google is especially if you're working with an agency to manage your ads, make sure not only that you have a plan, that you have a communications plan, especially through that Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Like what happens if something is out of stock? What's the action plan? Who's going to take point? What happens if there's a tech issue on the website 24-7? Who is the person who we are going to call or email about that? Um, every single year we saw websites go down over the weekend, people missing out on sales, and there's nothing you can do after the fact except try to make up for it the next year. So definitely along that line of keeping focused on the customer and then um, planning so that you are ready for any potential scenario. All right, this event is wrapping up now. Thank you once again to Corey, Mandeep, and Menachem for joining us today. Next month, PPC Zone September 2022, I'm excited to present What's Working Now in PPC featuring Amalia Fowler and Luna Rocha. Go to ppc.zone to set a reminder. You don't want to miss it. To learn more about PPC Zone and our speakers or apply to speak at an upcoming event, visit ppc.zone. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales. You can find me on Twitter at Jill Saskin Gales. I look forward to seeing you next time in the zone.